graduate college here in the next two weeks. One thing I really wanted to do before I leave is share with y'all how I've been able to maintain a relationship with God, a quiet time, and having a Christ-centered community while I've been at college. It's something that's changed and looked different for me every semester based off of my class schedule and what I have going on. And it hasn't always stayed consistent either, but it's something that I want to share with y'all. I'm going to share my personal quiet time routine. I want to give some plan recommendations to you, some book recommendations in different ways that you can find a community on your college campus. So I'm really excited to share all that with you and let's go ahead and get into the video. sit down to do my quiet time as I turn on worship music. There are a few ways that I feel closest and most connected to God and that is one through worship. I always feel connected if I'm outside, if I'm in nature, and then if I'm journaling, writing down my prayers. I feel like a lot of things come to fruition when I write them down. So I will link my worship playlist in the description box if you want to check it out. I also recently found another worship playlist that's more chill and instrumental, which sometimes can be easier for me to listen to if I'm reading because I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I have trouble reading something when there's lyrics going on and I know them because I'll start hearing the lyrics and I won't be reading the words so I found a more chill worship playlist I'll link both of those in the description box for you to check out so that is the first thing I do when I sit down and do my quiet time is I turn on music second thing that I do is I get my journal out and I either write down prayers or I just kind of write down a journal entry to God. I have my journal right here. I have so many that are just filled with journal entries to God and it is one of the coolest things for me is to go back and read my old journal entries and read prayers that God answered or things that I didn't know were going to happen that ended up happening that were connected to what I was writing about. So it's so cool to just document things and write them down and personally I have trouble concentrating or reading when I have a million things going on in my brain and most of the time I have a million tabs open in my brain so I have to write stuff down just to kind of clear my head because journaling's always been a release for me. Once I write down my prayers, my thoughts for the day, I feel I feel less overwhelmed and I feel more ready to dive into the word. Next is when I actually dive into the word. Right now I am in Deuteronomy. I'm reading about the Feast of the Booths, the Feast of the Weeks, and Passover, all of that. It's been really cool to read about. My goal by the end of the week is to finish Deuteronomy and to go into Joshua, which is the next book. I mentioned in one of my recent vlogs that I have tried multiple times to do Bible in the Year reading plans, and I never finish. I just get behind, and I end up not catching up, and then I just give up completely. So what I decided to do is I went in the I went in the contents of my Bible. Bible and I checked off books in the Bible that I know I've read either once or multiple times. Now I'm just going in order of the books that I haven't read yet. My first one was Deuteronomy so I'm reading through that one and then Joshua Judges. So there is still a lot for me to read and a lot for me to learn but I'm excited to kind of do it on my own and do it at my own pace. Sometimes I'll just read one chapter if I have more time. Like today's a Sunday so I'm gonna have more time to read more chapters. Yeah just kind of go at my own pace. I feel like it's less pressure. I've done some plans in the past and they have been really helpful to me so I want to recommend a few to y'all. The most easiest ones to do are going to be on the Bible app. I did a 30 day challenge, a walk in Proverbs. So I read a Proverbs every day and there was like a little devotional and some questions. So if you're looking for a specific plan, you can search up on the app what you're struggling with or what you need to do a plan over and they have tons and tons of plans. So that's a really great resource. But if you're wanting like an actual plan, an actual book, then I have some recommendations for you. A lot of these are from the Daily Grace Co. The first one that I want to recommend is Seasons in the Word. So they have 30 day plans, they have 90 day plans. The next two books are some of my favorite books that I use almost every day to read the Bible and that is the Theology Handbook and the Bible Handbook. I use Bible Handbook more and I've talked about this in vlogs before but this is such an amazing book. It goes into every book in the Bible. It tells you what type of book it is, the author of the book, when it was written, major themes, key verses, and key words. It goes into the introduction and this just puts the Bible in into simpler words. The Bible can be very complex. It can have a lot of metaphorical language in it and sometimes it can be hard to interpret or analyze and having it written down and explained helps so much in understanding what the Bible is trying to say. Then it shows you an outline of the scripture. So for example in Joshua chapters 1 through 5, first five chapters show God giving Joshua authority as he commissions him to lead Israel into the promised land. These chapters detail the final days before Israel 
enters canon. Every one of these pages is unique for every book in the Bible because it talks about different things. I can't emphasize enough how helpful this resource is. If you're gonna get one of these books from this video, I think you should get this one. I want this video to be helpful to new believers as well. A lot of people come to know Christ when they're in college and it can be really overwhelming to understand the book and this is just a great simple way to get started and understand the Bible more. So if you get one book out of this whole video, get this one because it will help you tremendously. And then just a few other miscellaneous ones that I've gotten that I've either read all of or a little bit of. This one is called The Light, A Walk Through the Psalms. Then we have The Attributes of God Plan. This one's a little different because you can actually like write down and there's questions for you to follow. And then lastly, The Prayer Guide. And this is also more of a study that you can write down and reflect a lot. So yeah, all those are just plans that you can follow, but if you wanna do more of what I'm doing, just kind of like read at your own pace, that is totally fine too. All that to say your quiet time and your bible reading time is your personal thing it doesn't have to be some laid out structured thing it can be as simple as sitting down reading a few chapters or a few pages in your bible and then getting up so besides my quiet time another thing that has been a really amazing resource for me in college is finding a Christ-centered community. I go to Dallas Baptist University. We have chapel services three times a week. We integrate spiritual time into our chapter meetings for my sorority. So it's been pretty easy for me to find it, but I know at other universities it's harder to find, but I can't tell you how transformational and important it's been for me to have a group of girls that I can study the Bible with and pray with, have harder conversations with when I've been at college. One thing that I've really enjoyed is that our chaplain in my sorority this semester had a Bible study group and we met every Wednesday night and he read in the Bible. We had been following this book called To His Bride. It's all about bridal identity. I learned a lot from the Bible study and it was just something I looked forward to every week knowing that I was gonna be reading the word and having Christ-centered conversations with other girls my age. Especially if you're new, it is so important to find a Bible study group, a small group, get plugged in at a church. And I feel like if you truly step out in faith, like the Lord will bless that and the Lord will give you exactly what you need if that's the community or if that's getting plugged in in some way. Maybe you're a musical and you want to lead worship. The things that you enjoy doing and the gifts that you have aren't there just because you happen to have them. Like God specifically placed those in you for a reason and he wants you to use those gifts. So for me, I've used music to help lead worship and I have a story that I've been able to help a specific community. Everybody has unique gifts and a unique story for a reason and we shouldn't let it go to waste. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was book recommendations. I got a lot of them here. A lot of these books that I picked out, because I have a ton more, but I wanted to pick these out specifically because a lot of them have similar themes and I feel like these themes go along with a lot of the things that college students struggle with, which is identity, finding a community of friends, and also finding your purpose. It's a huge pressure that all college students feel because you're pursuing a specific degree and you have to figure out what you want to do with your life. This one is called Live on Purpose. It's 100 devotions for letting go of fear and following God. And these are also really short devotions, so it's great if you're really busy. It doesn't take a lot of time at all. I love this book. I got it several years ago, but I didn't finish it until this summer. It's called What Happens When a Woman Says Yes to God by Lisa Tearkurs. It helped me so much in my job and career search as well. These next two right here are probably books that you've heard about before. They're both by Jenny Allen. This one is called Get Out of Your Head. This one's called Find Your People. This one's about stopping the spiral of toxic thoughts. This helped so much with anxiety in my life. And then this one's all about finding a community, finding your people. The next one is also by Sadie Robertson. It's called Who Are You Following? Here are the main points. Be more intentional about who you follow. Value being known over being seen. Turn away from the battle of comparison and feeling not enough. Let go of people's perceptions of you and instead rest in God's love for you. Use your social media to be a light in the world. And lastly, I'm going to recommend Dream Big by Bob Goff. I absolutely love his books. I read Love Does. I read this one. They are amazing. They have has to do with the theme of finding your dream job, your career, what you're passionate about. So those are all the book recs I have and that is kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope this was a great resource to kind of maybe get your quiet time routine started. Even if it doesn't look exactly like mine, that's okay. As long as it's maybe like a, a stepping stone or a starting point for you. I hope this video helped you in any way. Thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all next week. Bye!